Hey everyone! Hola a todos! This is Jahaira. And this is Stephanie. And welcome to Cuento Crimen Podcast. Y aquí on the Cuento Crimen Podcast, we are a true crime podcast and we bring a new case every Wednesday. Cada miércoles. And these are cases that don't get much media attention, so chances are you haven't heard of some of these cases. And we cover these cases in Spanglish. Así que agarra tu abuelita, tu abuelito, tu mamá, tu papá, a quien tú gustes, and come join us every Wednesday for a new true crime case. So, Abby was born on October 12, 1998, and she was born in Manchester, New Hampshire, y se dice que Abigail tuvo una infancia perfectamente tranquila. Like, those are the exact words that they described it. Todo en su vida era normal. She was just living an everyday life, y ella vivía con su mamá, Zenia, y su hermana. And so that's a little background on Abby Hernandez. Este caso pasó en el año 2013, cuando Abby era una freshman in Kennett High School in North Conway, New Hampshire. And they described her as a strong student, a student that was very talented. She was an athlete. And overall, she was just like a superstar. Like she was athletic and she was also really smart. Sus compañeros de clase dicen que ella era muy amable y positiva and just overall a joyful person. And I think it's safe to say that based on how they described her, she was the ideal student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we read that she was like really involved in her school. She was an athlete and she was like really studious. And during this time, Abigail apenas iba a cumplir 15 años cuando pasó lo peor, right? Her whole life just took a turn. Mm -hmm. um, it was on October 9th, 2013, where Abby gets ready to go to school just like she always did. She walks over to school again, just like she always did. Pero cuando se llega la hora de que Abby tiene que regresar a su casa, like after a full day of school, mm -hmm. um, she fails to return home. And I think as a parent, that is probably the worst feeling. At first, se llegan las cinco de la tarde y su mamá been so like maybe she got caught up with some friends maybe she stayed after school to catch up on work pero ya se llega la noche y abby is still not back and that is when the red flags start to pop up as we all know we should be aware of these red flags yeah it's muy importante de no ignorar las banderitas rojas Luckily, her mom wasted no time in reporting Abby missing. And unfortunately, we don't hear this often. But in this case, luckily, the police did take action right away as soon as Abby's mom reported her missing. And as we said in the beginning, Abby was a teenager, so she's underage and she has no history of running away and there is no history of any problems in her house. Like There's no domestic problems or anything like that. Abby no tenía ninguna razón de irse de su casa just like that. And so mm -hmm. for those reasons, the police, you know, took the case serious. Although, like, the, these shouldn't be reasons. Like, every yeah. case should just, you know, be taken and I, serious. Yeah. And I was thinking the same way, too, though. Like, the fact that she's underage, no history of running away, no history of, like, problems at home. That's a lot of these cases. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them still, like, hear from the police, oh, we have to wait 24 hours. Yeah. So it's very fortunate that that was not the case mm -hmm. in this case that we're telling today. Yeah, 100% agree with you. I just, I hate when we read the, mm -hmm. you have to wait 24 hours. It's super frustrating. But in this case, luckily they did uh, get to work right away. Abby was reported missing and right away, las búsquedas comenzaron. And apparently this was New Hampshire's biggest search. Her face appeared on missing persons poster on basically every block of this town. As we say again and again, siempre estamos diciendo esto, que la comunidad unida es mucho mejor. And, you know, it just makes the families feel like they're not alone. Yeah, and like, of course. you know, members, like people in numbers, like that mm -hmm. is so much power. Remember, numbers are strengths. Oh, wait, no, what is it saying stuff? <laughs> Strength in numbers, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they're looking and looking and there's flyers everywhere. Like, you know, Jahaira said, this is one of the biggest searches or their biggest searches there. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, they weren't getting any hints, any clues. And that's how it was for nine months. And nine months is a lot. Mm -hmm. Nos ponemos a pensar, nine months is like almost a year. Mm -hmm. 
Eran nueve meses que su familia no sabía nada y eran nueve meses que Abby posiblemente estuvo sufriendo, right? No sabemos qué es lo que está pasando mm -hmm. con ella. Who she's with, mm -hmm. like, is she alive? Yeah. You know? And I think that's the biggest, like, itch. Like, yeah. Is she okay? Is she alive? And then on July of the year 2014, she magically showed up on her doorsteps. That's crazy. Like, if you think about it, mm -hmm. like, you have so many questions in that moment. Like, where have you been for the last nine months, right? After all this time. Like, so many questions. And, like, mm -hmm. you, like, whoever was at that doorstep. Yeah. Uh, like, like, seeing a ghost. Yeah. But, like, obviously, this is good news, right? Mm -hmm. Imagínate su mamá al ver a su hija right there y viva. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's just really crazy. And like so, relief. yeah, relief. And, and so many questions, as we were saying. But, yeah. So, when Abby gets there and when she shares what happened to her everyone was so shocked i mean we were shocked ourselves mm -hmm. abby dice que el día 9 de octubre ella venía caminando de la escuela cuando de repente un hombre se bajó de su carro con pistola en mano and he forces her into the car at gunpoint this man told her that if she didn't get inside the car he would slit her throat And so she felt like she had no option and she got inside the car. Y cuando se subió al carro, dice Abby que he handcuffed her and wrapped a jacket over her head. Y después de que Abby ya estaba adentro del carro, este hombre rompió su celular because, of course, he didn't want it being tracked. And, I mean, if she had her phone, like, this was not going to work for him. Mm -hmm. Y de allí, él manejó como unas 30 millas y se la llevó a la casa de él que estaba en Gorham, New Hampshire. Once they got there, Abby dice que... This man took her inside a dark room, and all she remembers in that dark room was a wall with a flag with the quote, don't tread on me, end quote. Dude, I don't know. I feel like yo ni podía procesar todo lo que está pasando. I feel like I would have been in shock. I mean, it happened so fast. Yeah. And just like being stuck in the moment y like la desesperación of not knowing how to get out or donde estás, quien es esa persona. So many questions. This case is like really similar to Kayla Brown. Yeah. And like, it's just insane how like there's people who go out of their way or like they're in public mm -hmm. you know and like they are thinking about doing something like that I mean, and yeah. taking someone to a container just having this mentality it's yeah crazy so as we continue we do want to say another trigger warning as you know we're going to talk about what this man did to abby so trigger warning once they were in a dark room abby they said that he taped her eyes shut and he wrapped a t-shirt around her head And put a motorcycle helmet on her. Um, and he did all this because he was going to rape her. Y esta fue la primera de muchas veces que este hombre la violó. There was no escaping. Like she was stuck in a storage container with no windows. And obviously the door was shut. But Abby says that despite how scary the situation was and what a horrible person this man was, she decided not to fight back. Instead, she said that her goal was to befriend this guy. And I think um, this is the first case where we talk about, you know, like in this case, Abby befriending the person who's causing her so much harm. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I have heard it in other cases that it's kind of like a strategy, right? She feels like she has no other way out. Yeah. And so like she is going to try to be friends with this person and then like in hopes of you know trying to Something, leave right yeah. so i i mean i think this is a really brave thing to do and like a hard thing to do mm -hmm. as well and i mean this, this is a teenager but yeah she that was her goal que se iba a ganar la confianza de esta persona poquito a poquito and you know with the goal to get out yeah and in one of the interviews that she did after all this she said and i quote I remember thinking to myself, okay, I have to work with this guy. And that she would tell this guy, I don't judge you for this. If you let me go, I won't tell anyone about this. I told him, look, you don't seem like a bad person. Like everyone makes mistakes. If you let me go, I won't tell anyone about this. End quote. Honestly, I admire her because like you said, it was a very brave thing to do. I gotta tratar de ganarte la confianza and also just trying to stay calm. Like, calm, cool, and collective. Like, that takes a lot. Yeah. Y originalmente, él la tenía en un storage container afuera en su yarda. 
pero poco a poco fue dejando que Abby entrara a su trailer donde él vivía. And that's where she starts learning more about who this person is. Apparently, este hombre hacía lavado de dinero, like meaning that he would print out fake money, y Abby hasta luego le empezó a ayudar en this thing that he did, right? Mm -hmm. After being in his trailer a few times, he opened up about his side hustle, you know, like, estaba platicando más, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess you can say that her strategy was working, like, mm -hmm. se estaba ganando la confianza, and she's getting, like, more perks, you know, yeah. like, leaving the storage to come into the trailer. That's a big step. Yeah. But also, like, just to keep in mind, like, she was winning his trust, but Abby was still getting abused on a daily basis. Like, this never stopped. We just want to make that disclaimer. Yeah. And I think, like, again, like, what she's doing is super brave because, like, how do you have this energy to try to get su confianza when yeah. you're being harmed, you know? So a little more about what happened to her. Again, trigger warning. This is a lot to take in. So this guy had her call him master, and he even went to the extreme of putting a shock collar on her. And I guess he did this because she had more freedom and, you know, he felt like this was his way to still have some restrictions on mm -hmm. her. But Abby was still persistent with her goal to befriend him. And so Abby has a conversation with him about school, about work, and how much she misses all that. And also just to say, like, Abby nunca... Subo su nombre because ella nomás lo nombraba master. Like that's what he went by and that was that was all she knew. And because of that conversation, you know, of like her telling him how much she misses school, he decides to give Abby some reading materials. And the book that he gave her was actually a cookbook. Y allí es cuando Abby se entera del nombre de esta persona. Uh, because it was like on the cover of the book. Uh, his name was actually Nathaniel Kibbe. Yeah, el libro que le dio a, a Abby tenía su nombre, and that's how, you know, she was able to find out. Mm -hmm. Abby did tell him, like, oh, this is your name. And after, you know, Abby saying it out loud, he kind of became very nervous. Well, yeah, porque ahora pase lo que pase, Abby tiene un nombre. Like, he was no longer just this mystery man, and it's just like a face with no name. Like, I feel like knowing a person's name, like, that's powerful. yeah. Y pues así siguieron las cosas. Abby estaba secuestrada en la yarda de Nathaniel for a bit longer. But things took a turn, a shocking turn, when this guy Nathaniel received a phone call in July 2014. Una mujer llamada Lauren Monday le llamó a Nathaniel y le dice que she was arrested for passing a fake $50 bill. Y le dice que ella le dijo a la policía que Nathaniel was a person who printed it out for her. She basically ratted him out, and this was her courtesy call giving him a heads up that police were coming his way to search his home. And so as we mentioned before, Nathaniel, you know, would print out fake money, and this was like his side business, right? Mm -hmm. And so after receiving this phone call, he freaks out, and immediately he's thinking of two things, right? To get rid of the money, and also, like, he has Abby there. That's, like, the bigger thing to worry yeah. about, the fact that here's this girl that went missing, and she's in your house. Yeah. Abby lo observa mientras que él comienza a destruir todas las pruebas de que él tenía de fake money. And then when it came to Abby and fixing that whole situation, he had a very interesting solution. Nathaniel drove Abby all the way back to North Conway y la deja en el mismo lugar de donde se la llevó. He decides to leave her and let her be free. And not only that, but he technically took her back home, which is the craziest part to me. Abby just had to walk an extra mile or so to get to her house. And she says in an interview, and we quote, I remember looking up and laughing, just being so happy. Oh my God, this actually happened. I'm a free person. I never thought it would happen to me, but I'm free. End quote. This is like... It is a lot to process. Yeah, it's a lot to process. And like, again, like everything. I mean, she was there with him for nine months, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, she's free. Like, I can't even grasp like what she was feeling in that moment. It's just a lot to take in. Like, we're glad that we get to tell this story, right? Her as a survivor is nice to have like these episodes here. With a happy ending. Abby dice que Nathaniel 
la dejó ir libre si sí, ella juraba que no le iba a decir a la policía de su nombre. Like, all the details, right? Mm -hmm. And Abby actually did withhold his name from everyone. Hasta que un día por fin sí le dijo a su mamá, Zania, que el hombre se llamaba Nathaniel Kibbe. Y su mamá fue la que le dio el nombre a la policía. I mean, honestly, there was no reason to protect this awful person. And me imagino que la razón por que Abby lo hizo fue porque él ya tenía miedo. You know, like, she just went through this very traumatic experience. Like, of course, the last thing you want is, you know, to just think the worst. You yeah. Know? Like, think that he might come back but, and yeah. all these things, right? So, yeah, she just went through something super traumatic. But, you know, thankfully, after the get his name, they were able to arrest him. El 27 de julio, los detectives raided his property as well as arrested him. He was initially charged with kidnapping and was held on a $1 million bond. Él estuvo en la cárcel por dos años antes de haber sido acusado de seis otras felonies, including second-degree assault and sexual assault. Nathaniel Kibbe is currently serving time. He was sentenced to 45 to 90 years in prison. And I think I can speak for all of us. Like, I am so glad that he yeah. got caught, that he's detained, that he's serving his time for the awful things that he put Abby through. And I'm very happy to say, too, that Abby made it back home. Mm -hmm. And just knowing, you know, that there's people like him out there And that this is like a true story. It just makes it surreal. Like I can't believe it, you know? Y lo peor que en veces ni sabes because, you know what they say, like caras vemos, corazones no sabemos. It could literally be like anyone in the street. Mm -hmm. It's insane. And I can't stress this enough. I'm so glad Abby made it alive and she reunited with her loved ones. Mm -hmm. And I hope that she's doing well and I hope that she is happy yeah. you know like that i hope that she figures out how to like cope with everything yeah um and i hope that she takes this as a second opportunity at life you know yeah she did say and this is again another quote she said i just like to be treated like a normal person so you know now abby she is doing great she's living she's thriving and i think like just You know, like any other person would, she just kind of wants to leave it in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, like she doesn't want to be known as that girl that was kept in a storage container. Like she wants to move on from that. And I totally get that. Yeah. You know, si algo horrible te pasa, no quieres estar viviendo eso over and over yeah. again. Yeah. She does have like, she has made interviews, right? She has talked mm -hmm. about her experience. And I just want to say she is able to do that. Everyone should still give her that, treat her mm -hmm. like a normal person. She could tell her story. But she should also, like, chooses not to be known for that. Like, we can do that as well, you know? Mm -hmm. As the oh, yeah, people course. who are learning about her story. I agree 100%. If that makes sense. Yeah. So this was Abby Hernandez's case. Like we said, it was definitely one for the books. It's crazy. We don't get to end on a high note or on a happy note much of the time. So this is one of those cases and we're just going to be thankful that yeah. it ended this way. And thank you all so much for listening. We will see you all next year. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it. <laughs> But that's crazy. Okay, sorry. Yeah, we will see you all next week. The first Wednesday of 2023 um, for another episode mm -hmm. of Cuento Crimen.